Good day everyone. So today I want to be doing a bit of preventative maintenance on a couple of Apple II GS computers I recently got. So I'm going to open each case up, see what's inside, any expansion cards, what might be in them. And I'm also going to pull the backup batteries on each one because they're more than likely not working anymore. And we don't want them to leak all over the main board and ruin the computers. Uh, always a good thing to do if the computer is going to be maybe not in use as much or in storage. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on both of these computers. And we're going to do that right now. So yes, these two computers here, these are both Apple. These are both Apple II GSs. Uh, one is a little more yellowed than the other, but they're both in pretty good shape. Uh, they're both recent acquisitions, and I'm going to go ahead and one by one open each one up. Pull the old battery out of them and see if any expansion cards are inside just to get a feel for what these computers uh, can do and might be for. So disassembling an Apple II GS is pretty simple. There's two tabs on the back of the machine, one here and one here. You just pretty much push them in and lift the case up. Usually what I'll do just to make it easy is I'll kind of push in one pin, kind of get my fingers in the side crack and pop it up like that. Push in and lift, and there we go. Case slides up and just comes right off. We'll put it right there. So all turned around, we have two cards in this computer and the power supply. Power supply comes out pretty easy. So first we're just gonna unplug the connector from the power supply to the main board. And then this little clip in front here, just kind of pull it forward and the power supply literally lifts off, just like that. Now, if we take a peek inside here, we can see we have a memory expansion card and we have another, I don't know what kind of card this is. So interestingly enough, the card, I don't know what's going on here. We have a connector on the board and an alligator clip holding a piece of metal and a wire. And if I run to the back here, there is a push button switch that was sticking out of the back of the case. Don't know what that's for. And it looks like there was another one maybe plugged into the same area. Kind of real shoddy looking job here. To make it easier to see this card, I wanna pull out this memory card first. So here's our memory card. This is a Apple computer branded card and all the uh, chips are occupied. So I'm assuming this is the full one meg upgrade. These computers by default came with 128K of RAM. I believe a fully occupied card is gonna bring it up to one meg. Um, if I am wrong, please let me know down in the comments below, but I believe that's what this does. All right, now with that out of the way, we can see a little more of this card here. I wanna unplug it. So with this card unplugged, we can read on it now that it is a fingerprint GSI. No idea what that is. I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick uh, research break and see what that is. And we're back. So. I found out that what a fingerprint GSI card is, it was an expansion card or is an expansion card for the Apple II GS that allows you to press a button and it prints a picture of whatever is on your screen at the time you press the button. So that makes a lot more sense now with why there is a momentary contact button right here. And it's plugged into this interface right here labeled flat flex. The card would have come with a proper cable that actually ran out of this slot and was meant to mount actually somewhere on the flat part of the front of the case here to give you accessibility to it. I got to figure that this card was probably bought aftermarket by someone and they just kind of rigged together their own method to make it work. Now, as far as the other reason we're in this case is to get out this lithium battery that's in here. It looks like this is just mounted in a little enclosure. So we can pop the cover off this, pull that battery out and cover it back up until this computer would be a little more in use and we'll put another battery in it at that point. Now, as far as getting these battery covers off, I found the best way is if you use a flathead screwdriver, kind of stick it in the end here. So if you were to look at the battery and look at where the contact points are, right between the contact point and the edge of this little case, Stick the screwdriver in there. Put it back down to do this. So we stick the screwdriver in there. Kind of tip it towards the case. 
and it lifts right off. Here's the cover. As far as the battery goes, we can just pull that guy right out. There's the battery. And we'll go ahead and put the case back on. And there we go. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and put everything back in this case the way it was real quick. And there was one reassembled Apple II GS. Now here's the other Apple II GS I had. This one's, a, it looks to be in better condition. Um, only as far as yellowing goes. This one's pretty clean. The other was a little more yellowed, but as far as functionality wise, I have booted both of these computers before I uh, started taking them apart. So they both boot up to a normal boot screen. Now this machine is actually missing the other button to open the case. So we only have one. All right, and there's the case off this one. So as far as this one goes, let's take a look inside. So as we can see, this one has no expansion cards, no memory expansion. So this one is gonna have the default 128K of RAM and what, whatever else came by default on Apple II GS. So we'll go ahead and unplug the power supply unclip it from the case. Let's put that aside. Now, look at this case. We can see just by how the battery looks right here. One big difference. This battery, this battery here is in a different place on the side. And it's also soldered in, which is gonna make it a little more difficult to take out, but not much more. So to take this battery out, we're gonna use a pair of snips. Now I didn't do this with the first battery. I'm actually gonna do it real quick with this one. Got my multimeter right here I'm gonna set up. We're gonna see if we're gonna see if this battery has any charge left. I don't think it does, but we'll check. As always, red's positive, black's negative. And nothing. No charge in that battery. So we got our snips. We're gonna go ahead and snip this out. And I wanna show you a reason why I'm snipping it the way I am. So, our battery's free. Here's the old battery. Now, if you look close here, I left as much of the leads coming towards that old battery as I could. The reason for that is with a lot of lead left, I can go ahead and get another battery that's in its own enclosure and actually connect it by wire and slide it right over these guys. And I'll show you a picture that I did find online. Like that. All right, so with that, that's all we gotta do for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this guy back up. Just like before, power supply clicks right back in. Kinda tip it that direction first. And then this wire right here, just connect it right back down where it goes here on the main board. Just like that. All right, so that was a quick check and battery removal on both of these Apple II GSs. Uh, if you're looking to see how to open these cases, how to pull the batteries out of each one, um, as a quick note, the one that's soldered in is the older version. The one that's uh, in the battery holder is a newer version, Apple II GS, both the same thing, just different points in time they came out. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe. As always, guys, I'll see you next time.